Welcome to another edition of Real Estate Investor Talk. I'm sitting here with Bronwyn Corbett. Bronwyn, tell us a little bit about your journey through property and being involved in property because it's wonderful to see that there's a woman yeah. that's head of a property <laughs> company because it's in a world full of men. Absolutely. I mean, you've kind of broken the, the, the smashed the glass ceiling in, yeah. in a way, which is great to see. Tell us a little bit about your journey. I know you have got a financial background as well. Tell, tell us a little bit about that journey in property. Yeah, so it's always interesting because I always, whenever you talk to people that are in property, they always tend to have fallen into property and I suppose mm. my story is the same. But, you know, I, I'm a chartered accountant. Um, I got involved in property because working at, at BDO at the time, um, there was a very infamous um, property developer who had a whole lot of challenges with South African Revenue Services. They hadn't submitted books and accounts for 20 years and they got BDO involved at the time and I happened to be on the account and I spent three years reconstructing everything up there from start to finish. And I really, my love of property and my passion for property came at that point. Um, they gave me access to everything at that stage. They were developers, um, they were involved in all different asset classes. They taught me what not to do, what to do. So when I left them, I, I really had a very good rounding of property and understanding of property. And having my financial background plus my passion for the operational side of the business um, really just went hand in hand. And I was approached by my partner, Sandile, who didn't have a property portfolio at that stage to say, you know, we're a BE group, we've got a very good history, we've been trading for 15 years, um, what are your views to, ch to join the group? And it was quite risky for me at that stage because I had the opportunity to join very developed property companies. Um, and I suppose you then just become one of, the, one of the numbers. And I wanted to sort of create something from scratch. And this opportunity gave me the, the opportunity to actually build a portfolio for my first property that we bought together. Um, and, and that has really been the path that has allowed me to get to where I have been today. And, and just leveraging off just the, the fund that we've done in South Africa, the investor confidence that they have in us in South Africa, and being able to leverage on that going forward. Tell us a little bit about your view on the property market going forward, because you know there's still a lot of volatility since the global financial crisis 2008. I think if we look at listed REITs, they've had a fantastic run. Um, all indications are that it's possibly not going to be as good in the future. What is your views on, on that? Yeah, I think you know the challenge in, in South Africa is that we are challenged in South Africa generally, and I think the listed market in South Africa has had an unbelievable run. But there are challenges and headwinds coming up. So we, we're going to see increases in interest rates. And in the real estate sector tends to suffer the most from that. Um, you know, so the increase in interest rates, just really sentiment around South Africa. We've seen a lot of foreign money withdraw out of some of these bigger funds, um, of real estate funds. Um, so it becomes a challenge. You know, the general economic environment of South Africa, I think, is going to really challenge the property sector going forward. Where I see the key items being is that you need to have clear focus, clear strategy. You need to be at a, at a size where investors are able to trade in and out of your stock. The illiquid stocks are going to suffer terribly. And then I think we're going to see a whole new round of takeovers and mergers and that. Because, you know, investors start getting nervous when they're dealing with volatile markets. They want to be able to trade in and out of the stock. And if they can't do that, then they won't support that stock. So, there's been a lot of listings. I mean, I think I've lost count. The last time I checked, there were 32 listed property companies. I think there are more than that now. And I think that flurry of listings will actually end up consolidating e even further. And I and I see the bigger funds really looking seriously at some of these other smaller funds to look at taking them over. And I think we're going to end up with a much smaller property sector going forward, um, which I think is not necessarily a bad thing at all. Ronald, thank you for the opportunity. It's really insightful. Thank you.